And we are live. Drake Toll alongside Stone Cold Steve Austin and Grant McNew. Believe it or not, we <laughs> found a way. We're they stole our spots. They allowed a few um, random pedestrians to take the media area at the softball field. So we have now taken spot in the in radio box. booth that is about, I don't know, three feet by three feet <laughs> on each side. I wish we could get a shot of this. This is crazy. Lady Eagles are currently trailing two to nothing. They scored a run in the top of the first, but allowed a run in the bottom of the first. And that's how we got here at our two to one score. I thank Steve Austin and Grant McNew. Running our camera and production today as we flipped over from baseball. The Eagles falling to Sheridan. Final score of 6-2 to two as Bates swings at that one and misses. Strikeout recorded as there are two outs. One out with Julie Johnson coming to bat. The lone score today, Julie Johnson goes. Top of the flagpole. No. Top of the first inning. Johnson sends it long. First of all, Eagles you are can't up one say that. to nothing until Benton put up two runs in the bottom of the first to match it. This Benton team won handedly yesterday, and they're carrying that momentum into a ball game today against the Eagles, who upset the number one seeded Whitehall Lady Bulldogs. Johnson takes a ball low and away. Benton playing on their home turf. So this will be a tough one. You say home turf. I think that would be a, a advantage for sure. It's actually the home dirt on the softball side of things. Johnson rips that one to the left side. You got to know Johnson stepping into the box. Had a home run or last at bat. They're ready for it. Benton knows that she is the power hitter of the bunch. Johnson was intentionally walked yesterday. Benton decided to put her on first base. It loaded the bases for none other than Kenzie Floyd, who stepped up big, had a two-RBI single that gave the Eagles a 4-3 lead that they would never look back on. We will keep you updated throughout the game with the rest of the scores of the tournament. Eagles came into this ball game at 16-14 and 14 overall. I'll give you a look at the lineup here in a second as Johnson rips that one foul left side. It will stay she in was play, able to catch it. and the she out was able to will be it. recorded by wow. the Benton Lady Panthers. Can you believe it? What a play! This is a young I Benton mean, team. Just bare. I mean, she was in the fence yeah. catching it. Thank you to Steve Austin for the angle. You know, we've got second base out there, Steve. We do, it's but we can't see it. Nope, it's kind of tough. Just to see. like yesterday. Also, like to remind all of our viewers that the bases that you see on the scoreboard, they are useless red squares. You're they gone. don't mean anything. They're just nice and red. Panthers are 23 and 6 this season. Again, Eagles are 16 and 14. Bologna ranked 10th in Class 5A. Benton is ranked second. There's a shot from Kenzie Floyd caught in center field. The pole is going to make things tough. But after the top of the third inning, the Eagles trail it 2-1. to one. The bottom, we go. Welcome to Linda Marie's, the sweetest boutique that you'll ever find, located right here in our town of Bologna, just off the bypass. Linda Marie's supports all Bologna Eagle athletics and is the lone premium sponsor of Bologna Eagle Vision. We offer a wide variety of jewelry at the best price, as well as men's, women's, and children's clothing. We have candles, fabrics, handbags, shoes, and more, and even offer in-store makeovers all right here in Linda Marie's. You know, guys, I wish we could get a picture <laughs> of us in the booth right now. This is a interesting, the to say the least. Three amigos with this. This has got to be. This takes the cake. Yeah. On the worst setups we've had all year long, we are shoulder. To shoulder to butt right now. <laughs> I just hope no one's gassy. I cannot exaggerate. We are in an enclosed box. I'm I'm sideways. I can't hardly see the field. Was this we, solitary confinement at one point? We only have enough room for the computer on the front desk here. I'm not sure how Steve's got the camera. I don't either. Propped up right now. And we're lucky just to be live right now. Running, actually sprinting over here from the soft baseball complex. 
that is, it's been a long day. First pitch from Kimbrell. It has been ball. with the uh, guys losing. Yeah. Thanks for that, Steve. Yeah, well, makes Steve's it longer. Steve's going to make himself cry. Caitlin Oldie's in left, Jordan Alexander in center, Ashton Rappold is in right, Emily Farmer at first base, Bates and Floyd, your middle infielders. That pitch is called ball from Gracie Kimbrell. Julie Johnson stands at third base. Behind the dish is Shelby Wilson, and again, your pitcher is Kimbrell, who is signed to play softball at SAU Tech. Go Rockets. That pitch lifted into left field in the gap. It's the top of the wall, it gets away from Jordan Alexander. It's going to be a double for the Panther batter. That was off the bat of 10, Aris Hart. You know, they've got these sections that are poking out of the wall. So the ball hit the edge of one of those and went to the side. Steve? Yes, sir. There's not a lot of space in here, man. Man, we are up close and personal. More so than usual, that's for sure. Great accommodations for baseball. Great accommodations for softball yesterday. But today, not so much. Unpaying pedestrians took precedence over Eagle Vision. Lifted in the left field. Oldie oh, with a diamond nice catch. Pick. Caitlin Oldie with a big play for the Eagles. SC top 10. To keep Benton at bay, diving forward, Oldie. If that ball gets past her, it's a triple for Gracie Redman. She has some nice shades going on out there. Swag surfing. Now batting 46, Riley Gilmore. Gilmore just a freshman as well. A young lineup for Benton. We talked about it with their uh, radio and PA guys yesterday. They... You know, they've had a lot of success, but they've got a lot of girls that are freshmen, sophomore. And pitch on the outside. Called ball. Mr. Nick Newman made his rotation over. Most Eagle fans did. Got to bounce from uh, baseball over here to softball, just a catwalk away. That one lifted to the left side, out of play, foul. First two games here were blowouts. I don't think we're going to see that here today. No, sir. In this game. No. Nope. Had BB was mercy ruled by Sylvan Hills. Greenbrier mercy ruled Green County Tech. 1-1 one, one count. Uh, number 46, Riley Gilmore. Runner on second for Benton. Nobody else on, one out. That one right to Bates. Bates throw to first. Nice. will advance the runner to third base. But the out is collected by the Lady Eagles. And now, with two outs, up to the plate comes the pitcher, 77, Tuesday, Melton. Only thing worse than Mondays? Tuesday. Whoa, Steve, no. Rainy days and Mondays get me down. Yeah, I was going to say rainy days, not Tuesdays. Oh, okay. Why would you, whoa. Well, you know, it's work. Part of the work week. What did Tuesdays do to you? Yeah. Tuesday pops it right up to Reagan. Bates. Bates makes the grab. Eagles get out of the inning unscathed. Three up, four down. Be right back on Eagle Vision. Four up, three down. Wow. Welcome to Linda Marie's, the sweetest boutique that you'll ever find, located right here in our town of Valonia, just off the bypass. Linda Marie supports all Valonia Eagle athletics and is the lone premium sponsor of Valonia Eagle Vision. We offer a wide variety of jewelry at the best price, as well as men's, women's, and children's clothing. We have candles, fabrics, handbags, shoes, and more, and even offer in-store makeovers all right here in Linda Marie's. Back in the booth, Graham McNew and Steve Austin here. Tight spaces as I step on some cords and jerk the headset around. Steve. Just watch out for my feet. Don't step on my feet. Look, I don't want to break your toe again. That's right. So what have you seen so far, Steve? We, I know we've only been here a short time after the sprint over. You know, I, we see our girls holding our own. I mean, it's two, two to one, but you're playing a good Benton team on their home, you know, field. So, right. uh, that, that, you know, that's got to add you know, 
advantage, I would think, to Benton. Exactly. You got home field advantage, like you said, and a home crowd that's still got a lot of Eagle oh, yeah. fans. Yeah. Eagle fans, they have uh, traveled well. A lot of them coming over from the baseball game, which we saw our Eagles get defeated and in their season. But uh, good job to them. Glad you guys were talking positive while I was gone. Oh, that's what you heard. Oh, were you gone? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Welcome back. I had the uh, I had to go grab the lineups for both squads. Gracie Kimbrell up to plate now. Skies one into center field. Oh, I thought she was going to lose it there for a second. Catch is made cleanly by the shortstop. One out away. Here in the top of the fourth, Eagles trailing by one. Emily Farmer, she a uh, great job in track, now playing softball in the state. Plays second and discus right. in the state track meet. That's right. Great volleyball player as well. Just an all-around great athlete. She's pretty solid. I was going to say it, didn't you? Yeah, I was waiting for it. Now batting Emily Farmer. Farmer on the year batting 327. On base percentage of 422. She has 18 hits. One home run this year, 17 RBI. She watches strike one on the outside corner from the pitcher. 77. Tuesday, Melton. Not to be confused with the department store Tuesday morning. You guys didn't like that, Steve? Yeah, Steve kind of chuckled. That yeah. was good. Yeah. I forgot there was a store named that. Yeah, they closed most of them down, actually. I chuckled on the inside. Oh, okay. 2 or 1 count after the ball in the dirt. TJ Fridays, would that fall on? That's TJ. That's TGI. Not that's what I said, TGI Fridays. But her name's Tuesday. So. Well, that's, that's a week it's a weekday. day. TGI it's a weekday. It's a weekday. How, why are you agreeing with them? Look. Sometimes Steve needs a friend, <laughs> and that's where I come in. Yeah. I love you guys. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Moving a There's a fast. chance this is the last broadcast, it is. so we've got to soak it all in. Hopefully the Lady Eagles win, and that's not the case. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, come broadcast them tomorrow after graduation. Woo. Farmer takes would, the ball, 3-2. That would be a very fast trip down here from UCA. Yeah, it would. Oh, oh, Farmer takes one off the leg. She'll trot down to first base. Following Emily Farmer in the lineup is Jordan Alexander. It's going to leave a bruise. If I'm a pitcher, that's not who I want to hit. Alexander batting 440 with a 468 on base percentage. She has 28 RBI this year, 25 runs scored, three home runs. So she is between her, Kimbrell, Julie Johnson, Emily Farmer. Kenzie Floyd, I mean, this team's got some solid bats. I mean, that's such a nice pole right there in the middle of our shot. Hey, first come, first serve, Steve. That's right. Pedestrians get to sit in the radio booth, not us. Don't forget it. Drake's not upset. Nope. First pitch to Alexander, swing and a miss. I mean, I'm still on my soapbox a little bit. <laughs> but when you have an entire area for media to be, why don't you let the media sit there? First come, first serve. First come, first serve. How do you know they're not media? They're they're eating chili. Well, it looked good. It did look it good. good. They're sitting there. There's no radios, no headphones, nothing. Alexander skies one to shallow right field. Catch is made by the second baseman. That's Melinda Wells. She's a flex today, not batting the lineup. Now with one, make it two outs and one runner on. Hope Johnson comes to play for the Eagles. Lineup is as follows. Johnson, Floyd, Kimbrell, Farmer, Alexander, Johnson, Wilson, Rappold, Bates. Oldie is the flex in left field. First pitch, the freshman, Hope Johnson. Swings and has a single up the middle. Emily Farmer's going to stay put at second base. Hope Johnson safe at first. Now batting the catcher, Shelby Wilson. 
Wilson bats 288 on the year. 388 on base percentage, OPS of 785. 15 singles, five doubles, and a home run. Wilson with a hit here could tie this ball game up. Already had a good day today, right? Is she one hit the home run? No. Oh, no. okay. Julie Johnson. Julie, okay. Juju. That one swung on right back at the pitcher. Melton turn, throws, out is recorded. And we'll be right back on Eagle Vision, the bottom of the fourth inning. Welcome to the brand new addition to Linda Marie's Charlie's Corner. Charlie's Corner is your one-stop man cave shop located on the bypass with men's net gear, camouflage, boots, and more. Or you can stop in for Razorback or Valonia Eagle gear and find all of your hunting, fishing, sporting, and outdoor needs at Charlie's Corner. Had a couple different audio issues there to take care of. Back in the booth on Eagle Vision. Batting for Benton is 13. Oh, right takes one off the helmet. She'll walk down to first base. That's Shelby Samples, who will stand at first with nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Up to the plate for the Panthers. Comes 21, the first baseman, Caitlin Ginther. Ginther with the opportunity to bat with one on and nobody out. And the Panthers holding on to a two to one lead that they've had since the first inning. Again, the Eagles struck first after a home run from Johnson. Panthers scored two runs after, and no need for Ginther to bunt there as that ball gets away from Shelby Wilson. That's a great audio of that lady. That is Miss Tony Nolan. Uh -huh. Settle down. Yeah. Ginther steps back in. Ahead 1-0. Grant, you do have permission to turn the audio on the crowd mic down a little bit. There's the bunt. I'm going to move runner to third. Kimbrell's throw to first, collects the out. And now the Panthers have a runner in scoring position at third base, 60 feet away, with 20. Aubrey Goodnight coming to the bat. Goodnight, another freshman on roster for Benton that's in the lineup. It's a very young team. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you pressed a button. I did nothing at all. Wow. Silence. <laughs> We've had our fair share of audio issues on Eagle Vision in the past day, day and a half. And I've got to credit that to the, uh, you guys are in the little sound booth. I've made my way out now. Y'all get the little booth. 
That one popped into center field. Alexander oh. dives, can't get to it. She'll slow the ball a little bit. Benton's going to put another run on the board. Caitlin Oldy collects. Panthers are up 3-1 to one after the hit. Good night. Now coming to the plate, 26, Wilcox. Senior batting 333 in statted games this season. Senior on senior matchup. As Kimbrell steps onto the rubber, ready to fire. First pitch, swung on to Floyd. Floyd to throw to first. Ball gets away from Emily Farmer. The play at the plate, safe there. The play at second, safe there. Man. Mm. Everything that could have gone right for Benton right there went right. Went right for Benton. When it's going your way, it's going your way. And just like that, the Panthers, who had a one-run lead coming into the fourth, have extended it to a three-run lead at 4-1. to one. Coach Kevin Sullivan calls time, comes out to talk to his girls. Give them a pep talk, settle them down. Really, you know, guys, both teams making the quarterfinals is a huge accomplishment. And you got to hope Lady Eagles can extend to the semifinals. The baseball team was up two runs going into the bottom of the fifth inning. Two to nothing on Sheridan. Graham Middleton was really throwing a gem. Yeah. And things just kind of tailed off there at the end. Well, you know, it was about this time yesterday when the uh, Eagles really got the bats going. Right. So hopefully uh, they can do that today and get some runs. Hoping for a repeat here. We saw about the, <laughs> the sixth inning. The Eagles scored three runs. Steve, unplug his microphone. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear it at home, but every time Grant talks, there's a major echo. Echo. What a day. Sounds like he is talking into a barrel. Runner on second. That one popped up. Sky in the left field. Caitlin Oldie under it makes the grab. It's like our baseball boys made it over to watch the girls play. Got to love that. The support that Coach Brad Wallace. Oh, yeah gives to the softball girls and Kevin Sullivan, even after a loss, they would come over and support the Lady Eagles. The winner of this one will play tomorrow afternoon for a chance to go to Bomb Stadium, make that Bogle Park baseball playing for Bomb Stadium, softball for Bogle. We was, we was there not too long ago. We was. That one skied to the right side. Emily Farmer camps out. And makes the grab. Wouldn't be able to get that because of the building. Lady Eagles allow two runs in the bottom of the fourth inning. With three innings to play, it is Benton four, Valonia one. Welcome to Linda Marie's, the sweetest boutique that you'll ever find, located right here in our town of Valonia, just off the bypass. Linda Marie supports all Valonia Eagle athletics and is the lone premium sponsor of Valonia Eagle Vision. We offer a wide variety of jewelry at the best price, as well as men's, women's, and children's clothing. We have candles, fabrics, handbags, shoes, and more, and even offer in-store makeovers all right here in Linda Marie's. I could have done that all day. No, it's fine. I know. For those at home that could not hear it, Stephen Drake just harmonized the to entire, that commercial. The entire Linda Marie's commercial. I've heard it so many times. Guys, it's I feel in my head. I feel superior with the echo. You <laughs> two are inferior. It's like it's like God talking. Oh wow. Somehow we made our way over to Benton. <laughs> softball complex right after the baseball game. Found our way here, set up quickly for the game. It was well orchestrated. It's not I mean, the best setup. 
And I'm not, I can't babysit Grant, so I don't know the scoreboard's working well. Oh, it's working. Is that why we're in the bottom of the fourth still? Um, it does not say bottom of the fourth. Okay. <laughs> You've got to stop with the echo. I'd like to know if the people at home can hear the echo as well. And for those at home, if you're wondering, the Valonia score is the bottom score. Benton would be the top. Now batting for the Eagles, Ashton Rappold. Rappold, uh, part of that three-run stretch that helped the Eagles upset Whitehall yesterday. Rappold. Showed bunt and bunted the softball foul right behind her. Drake, did you flinch? No. Tuesday, Melton back on the mound for the Panthers. Benton with just nine outs to go. Trying to hold on and make it to the semifinals. Eagles trying to be the lone Valonia team to make it to tomorrow. That one's sky in right field by Rappel. Elena Scott is up under it and makes a grab. So now with one down in the top of the fifth, Reagan Bates will come to bat. Reagan Bates had a good game last or yesterday. Yes, she did. Bates is the nine-hole hitter today, followed by Julie Johnson, who is responsible for the lone run for the Eagles today. Sheridan softball team defeated BB 10 to nothing. Greenbrier, Mercy Rule, Green County Tech. Those two teams have punched their tickets into tomorrow. Sheridan and Greenbrier will play one another. The winner of this one, again, will play tomorrow afternoon. As Bates watches strike one. And that game tomorrow will be played against the winner of Greenwood and El Dorado. That'll take place immediately after this one. There's a called strike on Bates. That looked a little high and outside. She was kind of surprised, I think, that, that was called. It'll move to 1-2. Bates sets in. Melton steps on the rubber, and then time's called. Jake, I have to admit I messed up. I put in a ball instead of a strike. Can I scold you since you have the echo? Yeah, but it won't be as intense without the echo. Called ball on the outside, 2-2 to Bates. Can't help but... Reiterate the heartbreak the baseball team has come to earlier. Man, you, you just felt like that team had a good shot to keep on playing baseball. Bates fouls it off. 2-2. Two, two. Great four innings, and then come the fifth inning. Four and a half, up two to nothing. On a team you would think has a good chance of going all the way. Yeah, definitely. I, they're still my favorite for the state championship. Bates hits that one off the bat. It hits her bat again in fair territory, which you think would be a double hit, which should be an out. But I think they're going to say she was still in the box. I think they said it hit her I arm. think it hit her. But... If it hits your person outside the box, you're out as well. Yeah. She's in the box. Uh, that's the only way you can explain it. One, two, swing and a miss from Bates. And that'll bring the big bat Julie Johnson up. Johnson, the leader of the team, with seven home runs this year. Coined Juju by our teammates. She went top of the flagpole earlier. She went top of the flagpole. In the first at-bat of the game, the lone run the Eagles have put on the board was courtesy of Julie Johnson's home run. To start the game against Tuesday, Melton. Off speed from Melton in there for a strike. 
Great changeup. You know what Steve told me earlier? What did he tell you? Softball. I actually don't doubt it. I asked Steve yesterday. I said, Steve, what's a DP, you think? We've we got to bring that up again. Steve so said, do we have to bring oh, that up that's again? a designated runner. We have to bring that up again. Yes, we do. I will just uh, I'll make sure I will uh, pay attention to what you are talking about from here on. Taco Franco says, We're <laughs> oh, no, Johnson nails one to left field. That and one's it is out of here. Another one. Julie Johnson has hit two over. Top of the flagpole. Julie Johnson cuts into the lead. Up and out of here. It's now four to two after Johnson sent one yickety. Goes yard, the bomb. And Taco Franco has confirmed the fans at home cannot hear your echo. No. Would that be the Reverend? It Taco? makes it worse for us. It no, would be I don't like it as much. Pastor Taco Franco. Brother. Now stepping into bat for the Eagles with two down. Been nice to have some runners on bases. She hit that. Kenzie Floyd. Yeah, it would have. Floyd takes strike one. You know, Floyd has the ability to hit it deep as well. Floyd takes strike two. That one, a little extra velo from Tuesday Melton. Guys, I figured out the echo. It's going. Melton back on the rubber. Deals. Floyd dribbles out to the right side, foul. Just a little step back into the box to hit. That's a nice way to stay alive. Lloyd says back in, 0-2. Eagles trailing 4-2 in the top of the fifth. Seven outs remaining. Trying to cut into the deficit further. Lloyd fouls that one off sharply to the right side and out of play. Lloyd responsible for the go-ahead run yesterday. Eagles had the bases loaded. When Floyd came up, hit a single to center field, scored two and allowed Valoni to go up four to three. The score would hold there, as that was the final. The Lady Eagles upset the Whitehall Bulldogs. Floyd, right to the shortstop. Catch is made cleanly, and that's three outs, but not quietly as Julie Johnson goes long ball to left field and pulls the Eagles within two. Welcome to the brand new addition to Linda Marie's Charlie's Corner. Charlie's Corner is your one-stop man cave shop located on the bypass with men's net gear, camouflage, boots, and more. You can stop in for Razorback or Valonia Eagle gear and find all of your hunting, fishing, sporting, and outdoor needs at Charlie's Corner. We're back in the booth, more of a square, not a booth. Steve Austin, Grant <laughs> McNew, and box. Drake Toll. I like that, the box. As Liv and La Vida Loca plays over the loudspeaker, you gotta think there's some sort of energy to be built up from this sort of atmosphere. Standing room only. There's a bunch of people here in the softball complex, that's for sure. A lot of Eagle fans, we not saw, just people. Uh, we saw a pretty good inning there, top of the fifth. We've got a run, home run. Top of the flagpole. That's right. Top of the fifth. Need a little defense here. Need a, can't let them score here, you'd think. Well, you'd, you'd like not to, but a score here wouldn't be devastating. You can still come back and win. Gracie Kimbrell. Going to pitch first. Sets up. First pitch called ball. Well, that looked like that was in there, Grant. It was close. Didn't miss by much. Could have gone either way. He'll settle with ball. Now 
Next pitch. Called ball again. A few fans upset about that one. Called it low. Two-o count here. Next pitch. Called ball again. That one low as well. Man. Three-o count for the batter. Hey guys, the uh, crowd mic's working. It is. We have a great conversation going on down below. It's Tony Nolan. <laughs> Kimbrell called strike on the outside corner. Will you turn the, will you turn it up a little bit? <laughs> That's spectacular. That was exhilarating. 3-1 from Kimbrell, that one line shot. In the gap to left side, Caitlin Oldie fields, throws back in, a relay to Floyd. DP will now come up. Steve, if you had to guess what DP stands for, what would you say? <laughs> How about designated player? All right, Riley Gilmore, 46, is the DP, the designated player. Contrary to what you coined pay, it pay, yesterday. Pay attention this time. Yep. How many runs does Valonia have right now? Y'all caught me a couple of times yesterday with that. How many runs does Valonia have? <laughs> Valonia has two. <laughs> two runs. All right. We're just trying I'm, to – we're keeping I'm you honest. Caught on to your sh shenanigans. Sh what? Shenanigans. Hey, watch it. Eagles, first pitch of this ball game was around 3 o'clock. What, sh what shenanigans have we been up to? I, I We've seen quite a bit over the last couple of days. It's been fun. The amount of kind ball of the, games that we, that us three have been able to do together this year. Last hurrah. Steve, you and I have been together for two years now on the road. Yes. Grant has gotten to come in this year and make a big impact on Eagle Vision, carry it on once I'm uh, down in Waco. Something else happened in Waco. Hey, that was outside the city limits, okay? <laughs> we don't talk David. about that. David Not Koresh. Good reference, though. I'm surprised. I'm impressed. You're going to have to bring me what? back some cupcakes. What? What? Right. What? The, the people who have the uh, fixture upper? See. The silos? Please keep going. Like cupcakes. Put the shovel they down, Steve. Put the shovel down. <laughs> what? They do have a little That's bakery a, over there. They have a bakery. Have but you not watched the show? Look. That one in the gap again. The exact same hit. Gilmore save it first. Steve. First of all, no, I don't watch the show. Second of all, we should. Have you just not had cupcakes before? Yeah, all do, but yeah they, exactly. Evidently, they have great. Cupcakes. Like that's the weird thing about. It. Oh I've heard, man, I've hey, heard they have great. Bring them back a trash bag. <laughs> like it's something you can get. <laughs> they're, they're just cupcakes. <laughs> it's something you can get wherever. They're not even known for like you could have said, hey, sure they are. bring me a trinket from Chip and Joanna's. Y'all obviously don't watch. Okay, the show. well, all you had to say was bring me a trinket from Chip and Joanna's. It would have been really <laughs> normal, but instead you said cupcakes. You should bring me a Longhorn. See, better. A Longhorn? Texas reference. Uh, Everything's bigger in Texas. Cupcakes? Steve. Steve. I like cupcakes, okay. What do you have to have if you're going to play in Texas? Oh, in the band? Uh, if, he did, if he wasn't going to jump on it, I was. Back to softball. That was a weird. Yeah. Weird. What a bad segue, Moment. Steve. <laughs> two on. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. Eagles trailing by two. Drake, I figured out the bases. We lost ten viewers during that little. Uh, <laughs> you figured I, out the bases? No. Boy, that would have been the coolest thing. 1-1 one, one count as that pitch is low from Kimbrell. That one's skied in the center field. That one's deep. Alexander back makes the grab. Benton will tag both runners and advance. Runners from first and second to second and third. Now two in scoring position. One out. And up to bat is the shortstop. Shelby samples. This crowd mic works wonders. 
It does, especially when you put an echo on. I'm pretty sure there's an echo on the crowd mic. There's not an echo on the crowd mic. Kimbrell. Steps on the rubber, fires. Ball's low on the dirt. It gets away from Shelby Wilson. And coming home safely is number 33. Scruggs. Buster Scruggs. No. Pretty sure it was Lester Scruggs. No. no. Earl Scruggs and Lester Bust Flat. Buster. Mm. We're not thinking of the same thing. We're not on the no. same page. Mm -mm. That one's gotten to left. Will it be deep enough for tag? No. Oldie coming in to make the grab. That'll hold Cox at third base. Now up, first baseman, 21, Kaylin Ginther. Oldie has really shown over the course of these playoffs that she's a great player in left field over there. She's made a few sliding catches. And, she, you know, she makes those plays that you should make, but that doesn't always happen, so that's an important thing to have. Thank you for the productivity. That was good. First pitch from Kimbrell, called ball, didn't miss by much. Eagles trailing 5-2. They'll have six outs to work with offensively. Steve, what do you think? Well, guys. I agree. Steve is one, one. headset off. Kimbrell facing Caitlin Ginther. Senior on senior. Ginther batting 294 this season. That ball gets away from Wilson. No play to be made at the plate. Six to two now. Benton is up. You know, like Steve and I said, in between innings, runs here in this inning isn't devastating. I mean, it definitely hurts, but it's not devastating. It's still a surmountable deficit. Four runs. Grant, what was the final score of the baseball game? Why do you have to be like this? Look at the scoreboard. Well, I know. You know. Yeah. It's people like you that make me cry myself to sleep. No. Nobody on. Two two count. Two outs. Pitch from Kimbrell, just missed. Three two now, the payoff from Kimbrell. Swung on, lifted deep to left field, off the top of the wall. I'll tell you, we've seen home runs from the Eagles this season in baseball and softball, but I have not seen a home run from an opponent yet this year. You're exactly right, Drake. And that just says a lot about this pitching core. Not a lot of allowed home runs. None that we've seen. That's a really impressive feat. I am all alone in the booth. I'm about to have the time of my life as I step on the courts once again. 1-0 count right now. Steve's hit center field. Hopper right over the second shortstop. Slides home. That's number 21 who slides home. As the echo was messing with me, so I had to get rid of it. Now back to the center fielder, number 26, Courtney Wilcox. How you doing, Grant? Look, I'm scared. They just left. I didn't even know they were gone, and they ran away. Left you hanging. I thought for sure Steve would stay. He's my friend. 
or so I thought. What do you think of the crowd here? Oh, it's a great crowd. Standing room only for a softball game with lots of Eagle fans. Lots of Eagle fans. We really travel well. That's something to be proud of. Great thing for the city of Valonia to have so many people come out. There's a pitching change. Imminent. <laughs> we'll take it to a break for a second. Come back. Welcome on. to Linda Marie's, the sweetest boutique that you'll ever find, located right here in our town of Valonia, just off the bypass. Linda Marie supports all Valonia Eagle athletics and is the lone premium sponsor of Valonia Eagle Vision. We offer a wide variety of jewelry at the best price, as well as men's, women's, and children's clothing. We have candles, fabrics, handbags, shoes, and more, and even offer... And we're back, two outs, bottom of the fifth. Eagles down two to seven. Jordan Rogers in the pitch. The Lady Eagles. Graham McNew, alongside Athletic Director Nick Newman, as oh. diving catch missed. Oh. Called safe at home, runner plate. And Reagan Bates took a spill there. Yeah, a great effort there by Rap Holden Bates. Unfortunate the collision. Kind of ball was in no man's land. One of those, you know, you, you can yell out, call the ball all you wanted, but it's kind of no man's land. So not much you can do there, but great effort, yeah. It's, it was a great effort. You're exactly right. Tried, she tried to dive. Rappold did. She tried to dive to catch it. Couldn't quite make it. Runner plates. And I'm... We do have the lineup now for Benton. That is a very helpful. <laughs> As number double zero, Elena Scott is up showing bunt. We're at the top of the lineup. A swinging bunt there. That was something new. They've been looking for that third out. Well, we get it. We got it. Bottom of the fifth, Eagles down two to eight. Grant McNew alongside Athletic Director Nick Newman will be back after this. Welcome to the brand new addition to Linda Marie's, Charlie's Corner. Charlie's Corner is your one-stop man cave shop located on the bypass with men's net gear, camouflage, boots, and more. You can stop in for Razorback or Valonia Eagle gear and find all of your hunting, fishing, sporting, and outdoor needs at Charlie's Corner. Back in the booth, Grant McNew alongside Mr. Nick Newman. You know, it's been a nice playoff run so far. Both teams make it to the second round. How does that make you feel as an athletic director knowing that you have great athletic programs all around? Oh, it feels real good. I love to see our kids compete. You know, that's the one thing about our programs across the, across the board. A lot of heart, a lot of determination. There's very little quit in all our athletes. Proud of our coaches, proud of all of our students. As you say, very little quit in our coaches as there was very little quit in the crowds right there yeah, to some Neil Diamond. <laughs> Love me some Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond Pandora. Great station. Up to bat first is Gracie Kimbrell. As I step on the cords again and mess up my headset. That's three times. Fouled left. Well hit foul. Come on. Sully make a play down there. That was very close to breaking his finger. He's tough. He's very tough. Ninth grade football coach as well. 
went and won himself a conference championship. Know a little bit about that. Good times. Great coaching staff here. They know what they're doing. Now to motivate their players, never quit. Second strike there. A few fans upset, but most of, most of them agree. For the record, Drake told disagreed. <laughs> nice little hit down to left field. Floats it right over the shortstop there. Up to bat. Emily Farmer. The dinger slinger, Emily Farmer. She hit one well over the fence back home in People Softball still Valley. About that. Has yet to land, actually. Actually, it hit the second fence. Wouldn't have been out until we put the new fence up. Ah. Uh, but out is out. Out is out. Coach Sullivan talking to the umpire, getting a courtesy runner in. That's number 20, Gracie Kimbrell, who had gone back out there. Looks like Parti coming in to run. Is that right, number three? That would be right. Farmer batting in the, the four hole for the Lady Eagles. So Parti had gone out there and switched with her, switched back and then switched again. And then traded helmets. And then traded <laughs> helmets. I was going to say it's very similar to what we saw. Emily Farmer up to bat as the pitch comes in. Swing and a miss, strike one. Kelly Partee will stay at first. Jordan Alexander on deck. Swinging a hot bat of late. Let's see if we can get Farmer on and see if Jordan can get the ball in the gap for us. Ball high. Count moves to one and one. You're exactly right, saying the hot bat. It's a really strong lineup all the way down for this Lady Eagles team. We saw some of the bottom of the lineup play big roles yesterday with Reagan Bates, yeah. especially with the head first slide into home as that's called strike. Count now, count now. one ball, two strikes. Definitely a pitcher's count, looking for something to rise or something off speed here. Hoping for the edge of the Strike zone. Emily Farmer calls time. Talk it over with Coach Sullivan. One thing you don't want to do here if you're benton is groove one down the middle because, like you said, Emily's got some power to take it out. Exactly. Definitely drive one in the gap. Farmer will foul it off way behind the netting here. As they are running out of softballs. Have you enjoyed the hospitality here in Benton? Have you been able to partake? I've loved it. You know, they've, they've got everything here, plus a Bass Pro down, down the road. They do have Bass Pro. I spent some time there yesterday in the recliners <laughs> <laughs> in between games. Wow, well hit ball. To the Base fence, the Emily Farmer rounding first. Part Partee round will second. go. She's going to stay at third, actually. They were ready to keep going as a nice throw in. Just what we asked for, runners in scoring position, and Alexander with the hot bat up. It's exactly what you're looking for there. Absolutely. Two runners in scoring position. Jordan Alexander up to the plate, batting left-handed. Looking most likely to drive it to the right field. Wind up. Fouled back. Above the press box here, the press. Solitary confinement box. <laughs> a little different than yesterday, yeah. Just a little bit. But hey, I, I admire your stick to it witness. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike your counterparts that. That ball flies high, oh, dropped. Bobbled. An error. Partee Kaylee coming in. Partee will score. Farmer safe at third. Runners on the corners. 
And the Eagles have something brewing. Watch out, Benton. It's not over yet. Bologna's one of those teams, you know, you let us hang around and we'll start chipping away at it. Like we talked about yesterday, Coach Sullivan and his program. You don't see, uh, you don't see them quit. There's no quit in this team. You're exactly right. It's the resilience that this coach brings to the team. <laughs> As Drake Toll references a great song in the background. You know, Drake, he's done an okay job handling himself during these playoffs. How did the interview go yesterday? Drake said he is their guy. Well, he told me not to tell anyone this. You just leaked it right there. They aren't going to let him do anything. He said he's going to be running camera, but they're not even going to give him a headset so he can be a Steve Austin. Well, one thing I've learned, Grant, in my 20 years of athletic education is you can't hide talent. It's going to manifest itself sooner or later. So I'm sure it will manifest itself at Baylor. It's a good way to put it. You know, the funny thing about these headsets is you can't hear a thing if somebody's not talking through the mic. So, What's even better is I can make myself have an echo whenever I want. <laughs> I love you guys, man. I love that you all have fun with this. It's, it's a great service that you bring to, the, to our community. And they'll throw the shortstop there. Interesting. A little bit of an unconventional. Don't know that I've ever seen that work. I've seen it in Little League games, and that's about it. Hoping to draw the runner on third home. Doesn't work. 0-2 count here. There's a wind-up comes. Swing bobbled over to the first base. She's She'll throw there. home. She's safe. Runner plates. And we've got more runners on the corners. It's 4-8. to eight. Chipping away. That's what you want to do. You don't try to get it all back in one inning. Of course, we'll take it if they're going to give it to us. But, you know, a couple here and a couple there. We're right back in the ball game, the seventh inning. Up to bat, number 21, the catcher, Shelby Wilson. She can put the bat on the ball as well and drive some more runners in. We've got a rally happening right now and no doubt there's a rally fire built up with bats and tape in that dugout as the tension builds. The pitch called ball high. Johnson it's takes second pretty easily, no throw. Two runners in scoring position after the stolen base by Hope Johnson. Lady Eagles jumped out early in the top of the first with a home run from Julie Johnson. That's right. We heard. matched them, put up two in the bottom of the first, and then two again in the bottom of the fourth. Pitch comes. Called strike. Called strike. Wilson thought it was a little bit inside. But she's not going to make the call. No outs. Ball inside, good pitch, good location. You know, any pitch that's a ball for us at this point is a good pitch. We will take free bases. Pitch comes, swing fouled off. Coach Sullivan able to make the play that time. Gets his whole hand on the ball so it doesn't tip away. Half a step, just half a step and get over in front of that ball and it's good fundamental. But he's working, he's working. Two two count. Shelby Wilson eyeing the next pitch. Swing and a miss, that's an out. Out number one for the Eagles. Next up to bat, 
number 23, Ashton Rappold. She's been out in right field. Played well so far. Almost made that diving catch. I was just a little bit too short. The ball was a little bit too short. Great effort. 77 uh, picture, pitcher for Benton Melton. Delivers ball high, called strike. A little bit of question from the stands there, <laughs> including Mr. Drake Toll. One thing about softball, you see usually strike zone's a little bigger, which I think helps speeds up the game quite a bit. I think that's one of the appealing things about softball is it's a fast-paced game. But I like that, you know, ball high and outside. I like it when the umpire, you know, almost forces you to swing with a big strike zone. It's more makes it more of an offensive game. I'm an offensive guy. As you can tell <laughs> from many of the programs here is that's called ball no called strike. strike. Delayed call there. I thought it was low was, and outside. I was about to say that was a better pitch looking better looking pitch than the first one, but both of them called. Rap holding a hole now. One ball, two strikes. This is where the pitcher will sort of test her accuracy on the outside. Inside. Ball two. Count even at two balls, two strikes. One down. Base hit here makes it really, really interesting. Base hit scores at least one. Possibly two with Hope Johnson on second, who's got a little bit of speed. She does. Good athlete. Fouled off. That ball went pretty far behind the fence here. Could be scary to a pitcher. As we saw that earlier today, had a girl in the Greenbrier game hit a foul ball over the 200 mark. So they intentionally walked her. We've seen some balls fly out of here today. Shared an earlier hit five home runs, I think. We let off the game with a home run, or the top of the first. Ball outside. Count moves to three balls, two strikes. Full count. Full count for Ashton Rappel. As Ashton's done a good job working this count. You know, a lot of people, they get down to two strikes, and they'll swing at almost anything, just making sure it's not right. a strike. She's got a good eye. She knows what to look for. You're disciplined up there. You're right, Grant. Pitch. Swing and a miss. Chase ball four there, I think. That ball was thrown high. A little rise on, a little rise to it, I should say. Now back from the line, the second base. Two outs. Reagan Bates. You know, Reagan Bates did something yesterday. I think Drake wants us to do the helmet swap. I think he's wanting to do the helmet, the helmet swap though. Like, if I hand you my helmet, you hand me yours, and then we'll trade back. A little bit of wire technical difficulties. Nope. Whoa. In the words of Jim Carrey in... And you'll give Steve the Cadillac of headphones. This is nice. What was it? Almighty? Bruce Almighty? In the words of Jim Carrey and Bruce Almighty, that's how the cookie crumbles. That's how the cookie crumbles. Cookie. Cookie. Count even. One ball, one strike for Reagan Bates. We talked about yesterday her speed is dangerous on the base path. Called ball. Uh, just got an email. Two balls, one strike. Congratulations. We're pleased to inform you you've been selected for the reporter anchor position with Lariat TV. So I'll be a sports reporter and news anchor. Lariat TV. Yeah, that's what they call their station in Baylor. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you guys. Congratulations. <laughs> that's that's how the cookie crumbles. Bates fouls <laughs> one off. It's even at 2 2. Talked about the Eagles needing to chip away. They've got two runners in scoring position here at second and third. Bates up. Bates the slapper 
in a similar situation yesterday. She was able to slap one to the left side. Just stayed foul. Lakin Hartsfield elected to pick it up. Threw on the first. Bates was a little too quick. Beat out the throw. And that led to the Eagles knocking off the Whitehall Bulldogs. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. The ball, you know, you wonder, did she let, if she lets that go, does it go foul? But right. Another one of those... Uh, 2-2, two, two. Bates pokes one over the head of the third baseman. It stays fair. It's going to score one, maybe two. two. Coming home is Hope Johnson safely. Bates Just like that, the Eagles are within two. It's interesting. A lot of heart in this group. A lot of heart. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Look who's up to bat. Intentional walk is what I would say here. Two home runs. They've got to. The there she umpires. goes. Call there, Grant. There she goes. I think the umpire came to the dugout and said, Coach, you want to <laughs> put her on here? <laughs> you may have. Yeah. Say, Coach, I'm, I'm you not your have. guy. but <laughs> That'll bring Kenzie Floyd up for the Eagles. Now do you put her on, too? <laughs> That's the real question. After what happened yesterday, after the events yesterday, base is loaded. She steps up and gives the Eagles the lead. What do you do? Eagles have done well to put six runs on the board. Think about that catch on the right side between Bates and Rappold that that's made. We got a tie ball game right yeah, now. Absolutely. I don't know if Bates could have thrown that ball in more perfect place. You She's see the spin when it hit. It spun immediately 15 feet foul. She spotted it well. Territory. Spotted yeah. it well. Yeah. It's one of those hitting to get a hit. You got a lot of players, especially in the high school level, who are hitting for the home run, hitting for the long ball, wanting to be the hero. Bates right there doing her job, hitting for a hit. Kenzie Floyd fouled off the first pitch. Down. No balls, one strike. Melton's pitched a pretty good game. Yes, she has. Melton delivers Floyd. But I think that one in playing. Center fielder makes just, the catch. Just about to say, you, you see us getting our, a lot more timing, making a lot better contact in that last inning there as we put up a four spot on the Benton Panthers. The Lady. score going into the bottom of the sixth. Valonia eight. Nope. Sorry. Benton okay, eight. Steve. <laughs> Benton eight. <laughs> Valonia Lady Eagles six. Welcome to Linda Marie's, the sweetest boutique that you'll ever find, located right here in our town of Valonia, just off the bypass. Linda Marie's supports all Valonia Eagle athletics and is the lone premium sponsor of Valonia Eagle Vision. We offer a wide variety of jewelry at the best price, as well as men's, women's, and children's clothing. We have candles, fabrics, handbags, shoes, and more, and even offer in-store makeovers all right here in Linda Marie's. Back, Benton Athletic Complex. The Lady Eagles down to the Benton Panthers. 6-8 at the moment. As we enjoy a little House of Pain, jump around. Nice. It is House of Pain. I know people that have firsthand seen House of Pain in concert. I think I'd pay a ticket to see House of Pain. Really? Absolutely. How much? Oh, good question there. Yeah. I don't think I'd go anything over 25. Seven tickets. Really? I'd probably go 30. You're right. 25 is probably. It's for one song. You're basically paying 25 You're bucks You're exactly for one right. Song. I was just about to say I don't know anything else they do, but that one song always gets the crowd into it. <clears throat> now batting four. The Panthers is 10. Hart. Eris Hart facing Jordan Rogers. First pitch called ball. Hart, the catcher for the Panthers. <laughs> you know, Jordan Rogers and Gracie Kimbrell go to the same pitching coach. I heard. I heard. Who also coached Sidney Waiter. Who also coaches Lila Toll. Lila Toll. And Tatum Wallace. How old is Lila now? 11? 11? She's, Did she's you ever 11. watch the video I was telling you about? 11? Oh, I didn't. Oh, man. I didn't. That would have been funny. It sounded a little off the cuff, but it would have been funny. That's I, I don't do it any any justice, I'm sure. But Yeah. Check it out. It sounded good. I was 
Ooh, good pitch there. Good off speed, yeah, off speed from Jordan Rogers called strike. Heart in the hole now, one ball, two strikes. Like Grant was saying earlier, this is where you, as a pitcher, try to get somebody to try to get the hitter to chase something out of the zone, either to make uh, contact, roll it over a nice easy ground ball, or you know chase something they can't reach. Possible setup pitch. See where Rogers goes with here. Off, off speed, speed high. Nice. Count even at two and two. Jinx. You game, owe me a Coke, I think. Game following this will be El Dorado and Greenwood. Good buddy Tim Terry will be on the radio for that one. Tim Terry. Yeah, you know Tim? I've listened to him several times, yeah. Really? Sure. Well-known broadcaster. He is. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's been a Greenwood game in the past 20 years he hasn't called. Football, basketball, baseball. Now, is Tim Terry the one that usually calls in to the uh, the Friday night post-game show? Yeah. I thought so. Is that the only time you listen to him? <laughs> no, yeah. I've heard him before. That one oh, right off the glove of Johnson. Floyd to play. Throw just a little bit off. Julie Johnson dove for that one. Couldn't get to it. Hart is safe at first base. I figured they'd score that one an infield single. Julie Johnson slowed that up with a glove. Just couldn't make the grab. And that brings up third baseman, <laughs> number 88. Number 88. Gracie Redmond. 88. 88. That's a large number for a softball jersey. Pitcher of 77, third baseman 88. Yeah. You got a 46 on there. Unconventional. Ball low. One ball, no strikes. Multiple freshmen in the lineup for Benton. A very young team. Run on first for the Lady Panthers is Hart. No outs. Bottom of the fifth. Sorry, bottom of the sixth. Boy, bottom of the fifth would bode well. Boom. Swing and a miss. Same pitch. Got her to chase at that time. Count even at one ball, one strike. And if the score holds here, this will be the last time that I'll get to go live with Eagle Vision. How sad is that? Called strike, the off speed from Rogers. Same with that off speed there. I'm not sure, I mean, as a batter, is that not what you're looking for? Obviously not what Gracie's looking for. You know, batting the three hole, you gotta, you gotta think she's probably the Swing and a miss. Best hitters on that Lady Panther team. But Another Rogers off speed. goes right though. at her. Yeah, four straight off speed pitches. She was way ahead as if she was expecting the fastball. Coach Morris calling pitches for the Lady Eagles. Obviously had a game plan for her at bat that time. Getting gutsy. Brings yeah. up the designated player number 46. You mean designated runner? Player. We asked Steve <laughs> yesterday, we said, Steve, what does DP stand for? And he said, designated runner. Throw to second. Out is me. Wow. wow. Nice play. Shelby Wilson to Kenzie Floyd. What a play for the Lady Eagles. What a flip of the glove. Wow. Pitch called the ball, brings up two outs with the put out of second. Momentum. It's a beast. Coach Heidi Cox trying to make something happen there for the Lady Panthers, but. Our Lady Eagles have okay. no part of that. Grant, would you rather be winning nine to eight, but the opposing team has scored the last eight runs, or be losing nine to eight and you've scored eight straight runs? Winning. It's the battle of momentum right now. I wanted you to say losing because the Eagles are losing, but that's what's happening. They have four unanswered right now. But for one reason and one reason only, I can't take any more stress. Well, I would like to win. Count so. moves uh, two balls, one strike. Rogers delivers. Right to Bates. Right to Bates. Nice, easy play. Third out of the inning. We'll take a quick break and bring it right back into the booth. On Welcome to the brand new addition to Linda Marie's Charlie's Corner. Charlie's Corner is your one-stop man cave shop located on the bypass with men's net gear, camouflage, boots, and more. You can stop in for Razorback or Valonia Eagle gear and find all of your hunting, fishing, sporting, and outdoor needs at Charlie's Corner. 
Eagles trying to come back. Let's see if they can do it here. Top of the seventh. Allowed. Last go at it. Eagles scored one run in the first. Allowed two in the bottom of the first. Zeros in the second and third inning. Bottom of the fourth, Panthers put up two more. And they scored four in the bottom of the fifth. The Lady Eagles. I put five runs on the board in the last two half innings. They're hey. going to try to put two or three more up right now. Need two to stay. Two to stay. A couple of quick announcements, if you don't mind, Drake. Next week we have athletic physicals on Wednesday the 15th. Shout out to Wilson McKnight. Our athletic trainer does a great job with our athletes, getting them back on the playing field, but also organizing our physicals. Great service to our community, allowing doctors, bringing doctors in to, for free physicals. Also on the Thursday the 16th, we have our athletic cookout where we uh, present the senior awards. Senior athletes have been a part of the program for three years. Glad to honor them at that time. That'll start at 4 o'clock with some festivities and some grill. And then we'll move into the gym about 6 and uh, present the awards from 6 to 6.30. Awesome. New up for the Eagles. First Gracie Kimbrell. Kimbrell batting over 400, well over 450. One of the best hitters on the, on the team. Swing and a miss in the first pitch, down 0-1. Following Kimbrell is Farmer, Alexander, and Johnson. Good part of the lineup to get something going. Yes, it is. Kimbrell, the 0-1, takes a ball high and outside. Benton baseball team is playing right behind us against Little Rock Christian. Winner of that one on the semifinals to play tomorrow at 2.30. Could be a good game. Christian's got a good squad. Benton traditionally good program. Kimbrell ball takes high. a ball high. Count now two and one. Kimbrell ahead. Mr. Ronnie Simmons says Mr. Newman is doing a great job today. Thanks, Ronnie. Love me some Mr. Simmons. Kimbrell oh, cuts nice. that one to the right side. Well it's hit. deep. Elena Scott back and makes the grab. Tough to see with the camera view offered here <laughs> in Benton. But Elena Scott caught that ball right there, hugging the line in right field. Had her played well. Now batting for the Eagles, Emily Farmer, then Jordan Alexander. Both batters have home runs on the year. In your utopian world, you see Farmer here with a single, and then Jordan Alexander put one over. Yeah, I just not have to see, like to see the get the time run at least to the plate. Called strike on Farmer. Farmer. Farmer stands five foot ten. She'll play collegiate volleyball next year at CBC. Moving on to the next level. Delivery, that one. Oh, there you go. Hit hitter. That's all you need. Emily Farmer takes one off the lower half, and she'll trot down to first base, bringing Jordan Alexander to the plate. Is that Emily Farmer or Ty Johnston? She's been, she, she's been hit a lot. Albert was hit with the opening pitch of the, the ball first game. First pitch of the game. Some bad blood? Nah, nothing nah. to it at all. Not with that Sheridan team. They all, they... Josh is basically one of them most of the day. <laughs> he was high-fiving and hugging. Sticks, and yeah. yeah. I'd like to say uh, congratulations to Coach Wallace and his staff and the Bologna High School baseball team on a great season. Finishing third in the 5A West Tough, tough conference. Wow, Wouldn't be yeah. surprised at all if the state champion comes out of that conference. It's Elise Trotman that came in for the courtesy run. I know it's a sad day for those senior baseball players, but yep. hold your head high, this guy. You made us proud. Appreciate it. Jordan Alexander at the plate now. She represents the tying run of the ball game. Eagles trailing 8-6. to six. Grant, you said it, at least Troutman checked in. It's up to first base as the courtesy runner, or pinch runner, actually, for Farmer. Farmer, the first baseman, will not be able to receive a courtesy. Alexander, just a sophomore, swung it well for the late Eagles this year. Swings and misses at an off-speed high. I'm down the count 0-2 early, though. Alexander steps in. 
0-2 from Tuesday, Melton. Melton on to the rubber and ready. Melton fires. Ball high and outside. Good take there by Jordan. That one close, just not in there. You know, we May 10th, we have blankets out there. <laughs> 54 degrees right now in Benton. Beautiful day. 1-2. Alexander skies this one to right field. Elena Scott calls it off and makes the grab. Two outs for Lady Eagles. Now batting, Hope Johnson. Johnson is going to try to keep the game alive for Lady Eagles, who trail by two. What do you think about it, Grant? How do you feel about this may be the last batter that Drake calls for Eagle Vision this year? Never say never, my friend, but... When you know, am I going to go? You know, you're always welcome. I don't even want to think about it. That was kind of mean. Kind of makes you, me emotional. You probably shouldn't have done that to me. Mean? Yeah, you probably shouldn't have done that. Oh, man. Drake's gonna we die. love you, Drake. Oh, Appreciate everything you've done for us, really. It was a little sentimental. <laughs> Swing and a miss from Johnson. It's just another batter. One more. Gonna make it there, buddy? Yep. Johnson skies this one on the right side. Benton into the semifinals. They'll play tomorrow against the winner of Greenwood and El Dorado. The Lady Eagles go home after making it to the quarterfinals. Boys and girls both to the quarters. And they'll each check out today after a 6-2 loss to the boys and an 8-6 loss for the girls. For Drake Toll, Grant McNew, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Mr. Nick Newman. We're not out of here yet. Not yet. No. Drake, it's your last one. Congratulations to Colt Sullivan, Coach Sullivan, his staff, and the Lady Eagles on a fine season, making a little run in the playoffs there, knocking off number one seed. I want to say thank you to Drake, Steve, and Grant, Corey and Allen, everybody that's helped. Chris Lee with the Eagle Vision this year. You guys have done a great job for us. And again, we really appreciate you bringing this to the community of Ologna. And Drake, you especially, man, we want to say we love you. And uh, what you've done here and started this program is something special. And we really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Drake. You made us proud, buddy. You got to know when to hold them. <laughs> know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Know when to run. Good year. Good year. <laughs> are we still live? We are live. All right. Give the headset to Steve so Steve can say goodbye too. Steve? Love you too, Mr. Newman. Thank you. Let's make him cry. Say goodbye, Steve. Come on, Steve. Steve loves you, Drake. As we all do, we're going to miss you. I've enjoyed it. Over 175 games on Eagle Vision over the course of two seasons. The great moments, the monumental victories, the heartbreaking losses, the state championships. We've seen it all. It's been a great run, and I can't thank the school administration enough for it. Signing off on Eagle Vision for the final time, for real this time. Drake Toll, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Graham McNew. Mr. Nick Newman. We love you.